Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Well, welcome. Today, we take the time to refresh and restart. And we praise a God who is all about restarting and refreshing. So we are glad you are here. Whether you're in this sanctuary or on Facebook now or later, we welcome you to begin this journey of refreshing and restarting. So where do you need to refresh and restart in your life? Is it how you view your illnesses? Is it how you parent or how you grandparent? Is it how you manage your finances? Where do you need a refreshing start? In God, we find this refreshing start if we choose to seek it. So let us spend time finding that refreshing start in God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit today by worshiping and praising and seeking. So let us begin with our call to worship. <clears throat> if you'll all please stand if you're able to. And good morning, everyone. Welcome all as we come together in, to worship God. Join together as we are God's family. We yearn for God's guidance. And if you'll now turn to page 145 and continue standing, uh, or hymn number 145, Morning Has Broken. Please continue standing as we joyously pass the peace of Christ to each other. Go and enjoy and bless each other.
All right, let's talk about our church and the life of the church. Okay, our life of the church. If you'll all look in your bulletins, and you'll see this nice colored piece of paper, St. Andrew's Call and Direction. Our Pastor Pilts, after being here a few weeks, and he was listening and hearing all of you, and this is what he came to understand is what our focus should be till the end of the year. Meaningful and sacred worship, stewardship, care, children and youth, Christian education, prayer, growth, outreach, and communication. So please note we'll be following things. Everything's going to try to be fitting into one of those categories. Also, for the conference, if you go on epaumc.org and look on the calendar on there, you, when you pull up the calendar and you can move forward to August, although I think we're in August now, um, it'll show everything that's happening in the conference. And you can even look ahead to September. But things that are coming up next is a book group with the conference. It is Mission Rift, Leading Through Church Conflict. It's being done by Ben Wolverton, and I have heard him speak before. He is very good. It's a four-week study. It's Wednesdays at 11 a.m. There are conference-wide prayer meetings, of which our Pastor Pilts is a part of. They are noon to 12.30 on Tuesdays. The Zoom meeting ID is here in the bulletin. Next weekend is Laity Academy. So if you would be interested in doing that, Pastor Pilts is actually teaching one of the classes. Uh, and I actually took that class last fall, and it is excellent. And orientation to ministry, something that I went to three and a half years ago, that is available. And the opportunity to attend that is August 21st. And it is in person, I will note that. And the summer youth rally is August 28th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. If you are interested or if you have children, grandchildren, or friends that you think might be interested, please have them contact Pastor Pilts. And school supplies, we, are, we continue to collect school supplies for the local school. You can bring them in for a few more weeks. Um, the list of things that are needed are in your bulletin, and the bin to collect them is in the narthex. And Christian education, I know we're all excited about Christian education. I see Mindy smile. So that, that there will be a survey coming out. It'll be coming in next week's bulletin, and we need you to fill that out if you would please and let us know what day works best for you and what time and what things you're interested in because that would help us in developing the programs for the fall. And I think that is it. Oh, and Debbie Gilman is starting a book study, which will start in mid-September on Thursday, so please be on the lookout for that. That's exciting. And then she has another book that she's doing after that for the Christmas season. And I think we are up to... Oh, PJ is missing his hymnal. If you could all please check in the pews where you're at to see if there's a hymnal with the name John Lutz on there. We would appreciate it. So we'll have to, we will have to continue. So we will have to keep a lookout for that. So it's like a mission impossible. Yeah. Find the one hymnal that looks different, but they all look the same. All right. Is that everything for the life of the church? I believe so. All right. What are some joys you bring with you today? Grace. Oh. Go ahead, Dot. So grace, so good. Do, you, do we have a microphone? No? No? Okay, good. All right. So good to see everyone today. Go ahead, um, Dana. So,
Oh, that's great. And then she jumped in the lake to see if the new hip works. <laughs> that's great. That's great, Joyce. Yes, great, Joyce. Go ahead. Oh, excellent. So, <laughs> new birth. That's awesome. New birth. Over here first, then this way. Ruth is back. Yes. Huge joy. Yes. Yes. We're glad you're here. Carolyn? Oh, that's great. You turned 21, didn't you? It's always a big day. That's great. Other joys. What are some concerns you bring with you? Yes. I'd like to ask prayers for the Bulmer family. Betsy is one of our residents, and she just passed away this week, and she was 89. Okay. Okay, so for loss and moving on to the next stage of life. Right. Yes, uh, Dave Jansen and Pat Norris, who were, well, of course, Dave's in a home, and Pat's still recuperating, but we wish they could all be with us. Mm -hmm. Yes, so for our shut ins. Other concerns? Other people that were in, in Pat, because Dave's probably sleeping in the storm. Yes. The tornado, yeah. yeah. And let's not forget all those that are still struggling with COVID and the variant and the numbers rising exponentially and hopefully healing will happen soon. Other concerns? All right, then let's, oh, go ahead. Was that Dana was the first joy? Oh, Dot said she was joyful that people are here, that people came to church. Just write that down. People showed up. <laughs> I think we'll put that on the sign for next. Are you going to show up? That'll be the question on the sign. And we'll see. And then we'll count them. <laughs> All right, let's go to prayer. And as we take this moment in our service of worship and praise, let us first center ourselves. Take that nice deep breath and see where God is in your life. Let that image of who God is to you show up in your mind. Focus on that image and let God speak to you during this time. And so, oh God, the Redeemer, the Sustainer, the Creator, we give you thanks and praise for all the abundance of the joys that we have, the joys that were expressed and the joys that are in our hearts that we didn't express. We give you thanks for we know that all abundance flows through you and all we need to do is seek and it will be there. But oh God, in these human lives, we have concerns and worries and although you tell us not to, we still do. And so in this time, let us feel your healing presence for those concerns of health and healing, for whether it's our physical body, mental body, emotional body, wherever healing needs to occur, let your healing hand touch us. Let your healing intervention occur. Guide all the medical professionals that care for us and give us strength and courage as we manage the pain or the anguish or the concern or the limitation that is now in our lives. Continue to provide the strength for our family members and friends who help care for us. We give thanks for those that are homebound 
and aren't able to be with us, but they are here in spirit. So we ask for your loving, healing grace to be put upon them so that they can once again walk in these doors. We pray for all the concerns of loss and grief that we struggle with, for the changes that occur in our lives, and yet we still give you praise for the healings that has occurred, will occur, and is occurring. We give thanks for new life, even though knowing that life needs to end, but it never ends when we're in your midst and in your glory. We ask for all those that can't be present with us, whether today or later on Facebook, that somehow your presence be made known to them during their time. That somehow in those areas of darkness that some people reside in, the violence, the injustices, the hurt, the pain, the abuse, the addictions, that your light shines somehow, some way, that each of us can be a light to those that need it. And we pray most importantly for this church and where you would want it to go. For when we get out of the way and let you lead, amazing and incredible things occur. And so help each of us to get out of our own ways and just follow you, knowing that when we follow you, joy will abound, blessings will abound, healing will occur, and we will be in your presence no matter what we are dealing with in this world. We do all this because your son, you, came to this earth to walk with us, talk with us, cry with us, teach us, and you willingly walk to that cross, a, willingly, a willing walk in which you knew the end result, but you knew the end result was greater than what we could imagine. So we give you thanks for the risen Christ, risen into you in your glory. And so we share the same words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now that we've prayed in faith, let us affirm our faith. If you would please stand if you're able. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please turn to hymn number 170, Oh How I Love Jesus.
now, if, uh, actually, you can sit down if you would like to. And please join in the responsive reading. The spirit has overcome fear and creates freedom. The spirit restarts our choice and doesn't dwell in the past. The Spirit is our choice to follow. Amen. God bless you. And please follow along in the bulletin. The scripture for this morning is Romans 8, 1 through 17. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of God for all people. Today we begin a series called Refresh and Restart. It's also a handout in your um, bulletin. Today we're going to talk about refreshing and restarting in the spirit. Next week we're going to talk about choosing to refresh and restart. And then we'll go on to God's love. And on the 22nd we're going to talk about using faith to refresh and restart. And on that day we will bless all of the school supplies and have a baptism. And then we'll round off the month by talking about how to, reply, how to apply Refresh and Restart. So today we are talking about refreshing and restarting in the spirit. The words that were just read by Pastor Betty can be the hardest to understand, yet they summarize beautifully what it means to be a Christian. At the time of this writing, there was tension, a disagreement between believer and non-believer, or Gentile, about who can receive God. It's almost like that same conversation continues today you see paul the author is making it clear that anyone no matter who you are can live in god's spirit and my guess that for the majority of people that makes sense although the concept that god's grace is given to murderers rapists abusers thieves and bullies can still escape many 
because God's grace tends to create an unfairness in human eyes. But yet God's grace is still active in this world. Now, Paul isn't necessarily discussing God's grace in these verses. What he's doing, he's outlining that when you have Christ, you are reborn, refreshed, and restarted in the spirit. And all the human body desires and wants go away. In reality, is that the way it works? When you choose God, when you read about God in Jesus, when you pray daily, when you read devotions, when you volunteer, when you discern God's calling for you, when you are kind to others and you give generously, when you choose this God and live in the Spirit, does all your human earthly issues disappear? Are you healed? Are you rich? Are you content, happy, and satisfied with life? Are you living in ways that are sustainable and fulfilling without worrying about buying food or paying that electric bill? Are you living in ways that are sustainable and fulfilling without worrying how to get to work or how to grandparent or parent? Are you living in ways that completely and totally forgive your abusers and yourselves and the unfairnesses that you experience in isms, how you identify yourself, your body image, your choices, who you love, do you completely have a different life? Or is it the same life and you believe in Christ, Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit? Can you relate? I find that almost all who believe still experience illness, loss, grief, body image issues, abuse, forgiveness issues, worry, concern, work issues, financial challenges, relationship difficulties, family dysfunctions, and the list can go on and on. Can you relate? Yet there are a few who do live in a world of gratitude, that even in their illnesses, their loss, their grief, their body image issues, their abuse, forgiveness issues, worry, concerns, work issues, financial challenges, relationship difficulties, and family dysfunctions, even in those, there is a small group of people who can live in a world of gratitude. Have you ever met that person? Maybe you are that person. And if so, then I need you up here to be preaching. For if you're like me, you find yourself in the first camp. Where the human life, bills, money, illnesses, family, relationships get overwhelming, over-concerning. And we worry, we shut down, and we feel stuck and stymied and can't forgive ourselves. And end up doubting, being overcritical, caring what others think, and comparing ourselves to others. Do you do that? You see, Paul is telling us, you and I, in these 17 verses, <coughs> that in our lives of pain and discomfort, challenges and difficulties, inequalities and inequities, sadness and loss, in our lives of joys and happiness, contentment and gratitude, that in these lives we can all be refreshed in all ways, shapes, and forms, and restart at any time with the Spirit, with God, with Jesus. It's like Paul was setting the stage or actually describing one day at a time the philosophy embraced by all step programs. And yet that concept of one day at a time was so powerful when we consider life in the spirit. It's like the Reiki principles. There's five of them. Just for today, do not worry. Just for today, do not anger. Just for today, do be humble. Just for today, be honest. And just for today, be compassionate towards yourself and others. Or like John Wesley, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. Or this other one by John Wesley, make all you can, save all you can, spend all you can. Or I'm sorry, he says give all you can. I somehow spend instead of give. I should relook at that later. It actually says, wow, look at that. I just said spend and it says give. All right, I'm glad I write stuff down, right? Because then who knows what I'd be talking about up here. Anyway, living in the spirit means something. It is truly an attitude shift from our worries to peace and harmony, from our concerns to contentment and gratitude. But how do you do that when there isn't enough money for food or things are so overwhelming that you shut down, or the pain is too much for too long and you can't get comfortable and there is no relief, or when the bullying won't stop, 
where the critical thoughts continue, where the abuse, abuse continues, or the hurt continues, or the self-doubt, the lack of loving ourselves and our bodies. How do you live in the spirit and not in our own human bodies and experiences? How do you live in the spirit that Paul talks about, setting us free, setting you and I free? And that's an excellent question, and I don't have an answer for you. I'm certain you weren't expecting me to say that, kind of like a cliffhanger that went awry, or thinking Batman can actually beat Superman, or like watching the latest season of The Flash and actually liking it. But even though I don't have the answer, there's a glimmer of hope, and it's a way to refresh and restart, and it's found in verse 15. You see, we do have a choice. Do we let fear win, or do we turn to a personal relationship with God? You see, that's the essence of receiving this spirit, is by adoption and crying out Abba, which is a personal reference to God. It is a personal relation with God that only you, only you can have and be set free by it. Set free by the Spirit to be refreshed and restarted. I remember the day. It reminds, it's, hold on. I lost my voice in the first service, so right now I'm doing pretty good. I remember the day, clear as if it happened yesterday. I was down and out, lost my job. Where I was living, my bills were overwhelming. I was shamed and embarrassed, and I didn't know what to do. And it was easy to just jump. I wouldn't have survived, and yet I fell on my knees, and I said, God, I can't do this alone. I need you. And on that day, the refreshing and restarting began, but yet my bills were still there. I was still sleeping on a friend's couch. I was still jobless, but yet this intangible shift occurred, like being restarted, like the remote control batteries are dying, and you can only change the channel every three times of trying. But when you put in those new batteries, you can go nuts. I was recharged, refreshed, and restarted. Where in your life do you need a restart, a refreshing? You find that in a personal relationship with God that you choose, that you say no to this world and this body and its desires, and yes to being adopted by God. Where you can call God personally your parent, your friend, your God, your sustainer, your redeemer. And whatever you're dealing with, stop dealing with it in human ways and give yourself up for adoption by God in a personal way, in a way that you can see a refreshing restart in God, not in this world. And yes, we can use things like Galatians chapter 5, 22 to remind ourselves of how to live in the spirit. But first, you have to make the choice. Maybe you feel you've chosen already. And if so, then every day you must feel refreshed and restarted. And I need you up here telling us about your life. But yet, if you have chosen God and yet still your worries overcome you and you don't feel refreshed and restarted, then you need to consider if you've let God adopt you so you can cry out. That's the exact words that Paul used. Cry out to God and say, yes, you are my parent and I will follow you. I hope you choose to be adopted every day and cry out to God and not let worries of illness, money, hurts rule you, but let God rule you. It is a choice that is an everyday choice. And so let us be a church known for refreshing and restarting and let it start with each of us. May you find your restart and refreshing in God in all ways, shapes, and forms. Amen. Amen. And so now, in response to who God is in our lives, in response to this refreshing and restarting, we have an opportunity to be at the table together, a table that is for everyone, no matter who you are, what you've done, what you haven't done, a communion that is shared by all. If you can pick up the hymnals that are in your pews, I almost said aisles, in the seat. Um, and go to page 12, we will share communion together. And so to begin this, take a moment of silence and see where God is calling you today in this time and place. Merciful God.
And now together, let us share the words that are printed on page 12. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. And we have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift it up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which has been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here in this place and time and also on Facebook and YouTube. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and juice, on these gifts of crackers and water. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. Make them be for us the world of the, that we may be the world for the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glories is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. On that night in which he was with his disciples, even the one that was to betray him, he took that bread and he broke it. When we break bread together, it is a remembrance of the unity we have in Christ's broken body. No matter who you are, what you've done, where you are at in your life, your sins are given to Christ because of the broken body. You are in a new life because of what Christ broke for us. And likewise, this cup is a cup of a new salvation, a covenant that can never be broken. It is for life. May you drink it often. And so, the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ spilled for you. Amen.
And so now let us take a moment of silence that in the ability to have this time of communion, we also, as a body of the church, have a time to offer. And so take a moment and reflect in silence. Where is God calling you to offer your prayer, your witness, your service, and your gifts? And there are many ways to give your offering. Some of it is in your time. Some of it is in when you talk to others. For others, it is your gifts. Your gifts can be given to us through the mail, through today. And at some point when I can find the email from Ann, I will tell you the number you can text on your phone and give automatically. And so now let us offer to God what God has given to us first, a portion back. Oh God, we give this offering to you because you first gave to us. Use it to multiply your kingdom. Use it to create abundance and enlarge our territory. Enlarge it in ways that will amaze and astound us. Create for us ways to steward this gift, these offerings in your name, in your holy presence, in ways that will touch the lives of others and allow transformation to occur. We give you all praise and thanks, and we give thanks for those offerings that we are giving to you so that you can multiply it. In your son's name, we offer this prayer. Amen. And I think our next hymn is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms of... Uh, I was going to say God, but it just says Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. So I guess it could be anybody. <laughs> Does it say God in the hymn, though? Or just, just say Everlasting Arms?
You guys haven't gotten my humor yet, but you will. Over time. <laughs> One of us will get it. <laughs> and so now here, hear this benediction. As we go forth in this place, let us remember that our purpose is to know, grow in, and share the love of Christ with a vision of souls restored, nourished, and transformed, passionately serving Christ. And so leave this place with that purpose and vision. Remember, you can find a refreshing restart in area, any area of your life in God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. May you seek and find it this week and after. And now hear these words, a covenant prayer in the Wesleyan tradition, the contemporary version. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to your will, place me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be put to work for you or set aside for you. Praise for you or criticize for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, O oh, wonderful and holy God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you are mine and I am yours, so be it. In the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. Amen. Have a great Sunday, everyone.